Greetings, everyone. Hope today is perfect for you. We are going to talk about how you want to approach promoting your brand new product or service. And so I want to take a step and explain a little bit about some communication theory, describe to you the importance of key messaging, talk a little bit about communication models, and then the steps to build your integrated marketing communication plan. So integrated marketing communication really is the aim to provide clear and consistent messaging across all of your platforms and all of your messages. It doesn't matter whether it is a promotion on social media, a billboard you have, the signage in your company, or the words that come out of your employee's mouse. We need to make sure sure that the messaging is consistent to your brand identity and the values and the personality you want your brand to portray. So we do this by creating key messages and key messages really is sort of like that handful of messages that you will have that keep your um, value proposition in the mind of that a buyer and how it aligns to your brand. We do this to keep the consistency. And then if you, as a consumer, hear trustworthy messages over and over again, you feel like the company's more dependable, more trustworthy, and it allows you to be prepared for tough questions that might come up. So to create key messages, you must have some consistent, strategic, simple messages that are related and tailored to your personality. Now, after you have your messages together, then, as I mentioned before, integrating all of your customer touch points with those same messages are really important, whether it is your customer care, your promotions, your public relations, personal selling, social media, direct marketing, or events and experiences, or just having conversations with investors, having those key messages um, strategically integrated in all of these different mediums is really important. So I want to quickly talk a little bit about models of communication. There's three ways you can, can communicate one to many, which is what in the old fashioned days we used to call spray and pray. It's just like a billboard. You have one message to everybody who drives by or a sign in front of your building, one message to everybody who drives by. This is called traditional advertising. One-to-one -one is a communication that I can have directly with you as a buyer. So maybe I'm sending you an email and I can personalize that or even a piece of direct marketing that comes in the mailbox. Or if I know you really well and you are on the internet, I can serve you up a personalized message via social media or some other banner ad, etc. Many to many is where people are talking to other people about your brand. So the further you go away from controlling that message, uh, particularly in social media and other venues, it's, it's, it's difficult to control the many, the many to many. So it's really important for us to have those key messages really honed in. So one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of marketing your messages is that you have a source, meaning who you are, and your goal is to make sure that what you're communicating is decoded and received by the audience in the manner that you want them to receive it. And the hard part about that is that there are so many messages out there in the universe that the noise in the sheer number of messages that we receive gets in the way of the receiver to code or decode that message in the way you want them to. So you have to be very creative and very strategic in how you do that. So that's just a little bit of some communication theory. Now I want to talk about the steps in developing a promotion plan. The first thing, there's five steps. And the first thing that you need to do is identify your target audience. You do that by your segmentation, targeting, and position positioning. Once you have identified that target audience, then you are going to figure out what is my objective? Do I want to create awareness with that target audience? Do I want them to buy now? Do I want to compare myself to other products and services in the marketplace? So that's the second thing you're going to do. The third is to 
determine and allocate the marketing communications budget. So how much money do you have to spend on this target audience? And once you do that, you start to design your promotion mix. If you, if your objective is complete awareness, you're going to look at the buyer of the, in, in where they are in their journey and pick some promotion mediums and tactics that are going to gather awareness as opposed to maybe you're retaining a customer where you might have more of a personalized communication or a rewards program, or even some email or text messages to speak to them directly. So you are going to figure out based on that target audience, what is the mix? Where are you going to place those messages? How are you going to place it? How are you going to make sure that it's communicated in a way that they are coding it, decoding it the way you want them to? And what are those key messages? And then finally, what are the key performance indicators that you've established to make sure that it is correct? So the last thing you're going to do is you're always going to identify that uh, particular, um, whether you have met your objectives or not. So once you have your strategy together and you've done a consumer buyer's journey, understanding where that buyer is, that target audience within its, its decision-making process and how you're going to reach them with what messages, with what mediums at what time and how much you're going to spend, I want you to pull together an integrated marketing calendar. Now calendars are meant to be fluid and changing, but it gives you a place to start to think through all of those different touch points, the mediums and how you might spread across even a month or two or an entire year, how you plan on spreading the budget. Now there's millions of marketing calendars out there. You can use automation tools. You can use a spreadsheet. It's completely up to you, but I want you to start thinking about how you're going to capture this entire plan in a way where you can really focus in on what your goals and objectives are. We're going to talk a little bit about the decision-making process. Um, the first one is awareness. First of all, people need to understand that you're out there. And I call this air cover. Air cover is your signage. Um, your directional tools, maybe a billboard, maybe um, radio, but getting people to know that you do exist. And there's ways of doing that. If you're in the service industry, you can certainly wrap a car, use different messaging. There's lots of fun ways to use air cover. And I have some examples here. There's billboards, there's indoor billboards, there's bus wraps, there's bus benches. But again, this is a one to many advertisement. So you're not speaking directly to that customer. The second focus really is information and consideration. How are you going to get found? So you have to be able to optimize your uh, digital properties, your websites, your apps to be found on Google because 90% of all searches start on Google. And if you're going to get found, you need to be there. So whether, you know, maybe you're selling homes and, and you want to be on realtor.com, or if you're a restaurant, you'll, you're going to be paying attention to what's on Yelp, but getting found is really how people find information and put you into the consideration set. Once they've decided, you know, I'm, I'm ready to start looking and I'm seriously thinking about buying a product or service, they start comparing you to alternatives and that, and that this is your, your imperative to how are you going to stand out and what is that value? What is your differentiator between your, your competition? So this is not the high level. Let's get people excited with the video. This is how you compare and what are those unique differentiators? to get the customer to choose you over someone else. Uh, conversion. Once you, you're in that consideration set and people have decided to buy from you, how are you going to push them over the edge from not doing anything to holding off to buying now? And a lot of times we use pricing tools for this. We will use... Um, 
reminders. Maybe you left something in your cart messaging. We might do some programmatic advertisement where if you go to a website, we're going to use some digital media, um, to retarget you, whether you're on social media or you're on a, a web page, et cetera. So getting them to buy is a conversion process. Then once they are a customer, it's really important to think about how are you going to retain them? What sort of loyalty or advocacy do you have with them? When was the last time you ate at a chain restaurant and they didn't give you a survey when you left? Um, you want to know how your customers are satisfied or not. How are you doing on those ratings and review sites on Yelp and other places? So be proactive in trying to build that relationship with customers because it's so much easier to keep a customer and build loyalty than it is to um, spend all of that money and resources in capturing new ones. So think about expenses. Um, it's not just placing the media. You have to think about uh, <clears throat> when you're defining your budget, what are you going to do for web development, video production, images, photography, designers, um, models wearing your clothes, um, things like that, or, or eating your food, whatever that is. You also have to think about media placement. Uh, what is your AdWord budget or your pay-per-click budget? Do you have a ceiling on how much you want to spend in Google, Google ads every month? There's also things such as if you're doing photography or, um, you know, a lot of using celebrities or things like that or endorsement fees, what are the royalties you're going to pay? What are those endorsement fees? And then what about the people to manage your plan? Now, content marketing is time consuming and expensive. You're not going to be as an entrepreneur able to do all of this on your own. You're going to have to have a posse of people to help you out with this. So who's going to manage your plan and how much are you going to pay them for this? So I know this was a lot of information and you're just going to really need to noodle through this, not only the theory itself, but the importance of integrating marketing communications and making sure your message is on point, um, understanding where the consumer is in their buyer's journey, and then what, how the steps that you're going to be able to use to make that plan. So if you are taking my class, you have an integrated marketing portfolio assignment where you're going to walk through each of these steps and you are going to create a buyer's journey, um, some key messages and a marketing calendar. And you're going to put it all into a nice formatted executive summary. So here's just a couple of examples of a consumer buyer's journey that one of my students had uh, completed for their new product, as well as a simple marketing calendar. So hopefully you found this information useful. As always, if you ever have questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll get back to you just as quickly as I can. Have a super fun time creating promotion for your products and make sure that your messages are on point and that you're hitting the right message at the right time for that right target audience. Take care, everyone.